You know, sometimes it can be difficult to admit to ourselves or to show to others that we've failed. I guess it can be embarrassing, sometimes uncomfortable. It kind of gives people this glimpse into our imperfections. But you know, some type of catastrophe, albeit big or small, happens to most of us regularly. And in my baking world, it happens on a regular basis. But you know, I need these failures, or perhaps it's better to say that I embrace these failures. Because if I'm not making mistakes, then I'm probably not pushing myself hard enough, and I'm certainly not trying new things. And you know, the real magic happens when we take the information from the mistakes we've made and we use it to improve. So today we're gonna to look at a failure I had this week and I promise you it's catastrophic. We're gonna look at it together and we're gonna see how it can be fixed. So my base recipe is a chocolate and cherry sourdough from the team over at Modernist Cuisine Bread. Now this one really tweaked my interest. Now I popped all of the ingredients from their recipe into my recipe calculator just to make it easy to scale. Now, it's not quite spot on, but it's definitely close enough. I know these measurements are probably gonna need tweaking anyway. And I'm really not that interested in creating an exact clone of their bread. It's the idea that I absolutely love. Now, the original recipe was for a kilo of dough, but I'm gonna scale this down to 750 grams just to fit the banneton that I'm using. The hydration's quite high in this at just over 90%, but we have got a high percentage of inclusions. The chocolate and the cherries are both at 48%. Plus, we've got the cocoa powder. We've also got a high percentage of levan. Now, I'm gonna link to MCB's original recipe in the video description, and if you wanna check out the sourdough calculator, that will be linked down there too. So, let's get this little lot mixed up and see what we're working with. First of all, I'm gonna mix 164 grams of strong bread flour and 23 grams of cocoa powder together, just to make sure they're really well blended before I introduce any liquid. Now we're only two ingredients in, and I promise you this smells absolutely awesome. A taste of what's to come, that's for sure. Now in a separate bowl, I'm adding 133 grams of water. I'm gonna mix it with 0.2 grams of dried instant yeast. Now in goes 173 grams of super active, super fruity Levan, followed by 11 grams of Coffee Island's finest espresso. Now I'm gonna add about half of the flour and cocoa powder mix so that I can blend that starter in easily. And then once it's a little bit smoother, the rest of that flour and cocoa powder mix goes in and then it's brought together with a spoon. And then finally, I use a wet hand just to finish bringing that together into a rough dough. This is gonna get covered and it's gonna auto lease at 25 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Now I'm gonna work in five grams of salt until it's really well combined. And I'm just taking a minute or so to extend that mixing process a little. Now this is gonna get covered again and it's gonna to continue to ferment at 25 degrees Celsius. So we're 30 minutes into the bulk ferment and MCB's recipe says to leave this for one hour before the first stretch. But you know, I just wanna bring this dough together. I guess I'm eager to see what the consistency is like so that I can try and work out the best way to deal with the inclusions. Now, I'm not stretching the dough at this point. I'm more just folding it and testing it. I'm just kind of bringing it together. It is pretty wet. And at this stage, I'd expect to feel a bit more strength. Now, while I'm not 100% sure, I'm guessing that the inclusion of the cocoa powder has got something to do with that dough feeling softer and tearing just a bit more easily. Right, so it's 30 minutes later. It's been one hour since the salt was added. And as per the recipe, I'm gonna fold the inclusions in on this first proper stretch. Now I'm weighing out 120 grams of chocolate. That's 48% in baker's percentages and exactly the same for the cherries. So this loaf is gonna be jam packed. Now I'm gonna even out the inclusions throughout the layers as I fold the dough up. And then once everything's been brought together, it's gonna to go back into its bowl and it's gonna to continue to ferment covered at 25 degrees Celsius. Right, so the recipe called for six stretches in total. That was over a four hour period with a half hour rest after the final fold and before shaping. But after I got to the fourth fold, I checked the pH of the dough and it had already dropped to 4.4. So I let it rest for half an hour at 25 degrees Celsius just to soften up and then I shaped it. 
Now the dough was pretty tight, so there wasn't a lot of technique here. It was just basically a matter of rolling this up into a sausage and popping it in the basket. Now MCB's recipe said to pop it straight in the fridge for a cold proof, but I decided to prove it at 25 degrees Celsius again for about half an hour to gain some volume. After that, it went straight in the freezer for 30 minutes to flash chill, and then it went into the fridge for its overnight cold proof. So here we are the next day, and I've got to say, I was pretty excited about getting this into the oven. Now the recipe suggested preheating the oven to 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, but you know what? I know that's running a bit hot for my stone and for my oven. So I decided to preheat to 220 degrees Celsius, that's 430 degrees Fahrenheit. Now MCB suggests baking for 30 minutes covered for a 500 gram dough and 45 minutes covered for a kilo of dough. So I kind of split the difference. I'm at 750 grams of dough, so I decided to bake for 37 minutes covered and then it gets a final 10 minutes of baking uncovered. I'm gonna place the dough on an inverted baking tray to protect the underside of the loaf. Now, in it goes, and I guess time is gonna tell. Right, so at this point, we could chalk this up to a total disaster, or we can try and figure out what went wrong and what we can do to improve it. And I wanna make it clear the outcome isn't the fault of the recipe, and of course I've made adjustments to try and compensate what was happening in real time with the dough. But by observing the visuals, the taste, and the textures, we can not only work out how to improve this bread, but we can also shape it into the product that we're visualizing. Now, the dough collapsed during that cold proof. That destroyed any potential volume in the loaf. I'm not sure if you spotted that. It went into the fridge with lots of volume, but it came out with a lot less. Now, of course, I probably proved it too long at room temperature. And due to that high percentage of starter, things just went a little bit too quick during the fermentation process. The crust is awful. The crust doesn't do anything for this at all. In fact, it's not very nice. Where it's baked, you've got the bitterness coming through of the cherries, where they've been overcooked on the outside, and they're crispy and really quite bitter. Now, the crumb may not have been perfect, but the texture and the flavor was amazing. The actual taste is phenomenal. This is like eating cake. I mean, this is just that perfect cross between sourdough and cake and with no added sugar. Okay, you've got the sweetness from the cherries, I mean, a little bit from the chocolate, I guess, but this is amazing. I'm gonna be following up really soon with my revised recipe and I want your input. What do you think went wrong? And I guess more importantly, what would you change? I'm gonna be testing out your suggestions in the kitchen. Now I think there's one easy adjustment that could be made to improve this, and it's nothing to do with the recipe or the ingredients, it's a piece of equipment. And it suits this type of bread perfectly. It makes perfect sense. Can you guess what it is? I wanna say a massive thanks to Modernist Cuisine for an absolutely amazing sourdough combination and firmly planting a seed in my mind. Now I'm gonna see you again very, very soon. Stay tuned, because when the tweaks are completed, this, this is gonna be a mind-blowing loaf.